Good evening and happy Friday. Thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Whitney Ward. A new statewide poll shows Washingtonians agree homelessness is one of the top troubles facing the state legislature. Kremlin Amanda Rowley looked into the issue in Spokane and shares what steps the city is taking to address it. Amanda? Addressing homelessness is a work in progress. That's according to C Spokane City Mayor Nadine Woodward's office, but her office says it has seen significant gains in the last year and a half to making the system more efficient and addressing the needs in the community. The city of Spokane used to secure seasonal shelter contracts for warming and cooling centers, but this approach was only a temporary fix. It's now transitioned into securing year round contracts with multiple organizations. Truth Ministries and the Guardians Foundation each entered a year round contract with the city to provide night by night and day use shelter services. The Salvation Army is also expected to open the Way Out Center in mid December. It will offer a service intensive referral program working with 60 people at a time. So this program really is designed to help folks um, exit homelessness permanently. Uh, it's not a drop-in center where they can come and go as, as they please. It's really a program designed to be that safe space where they know they're going to have a bed every night. And as long as they continue to work their program, we're con going to continue to work with them. Spokane City Council President Brian Begg says things are getting better in Spokane, but just not fast enough. We are doing more than we ever have, but the problem is getting so much worse that I don't know that we're getting ahead of it. And I would say we're, I shouldn't say that, we are not getting ahead of it. And that's, that's the challenge. As we head into the winter months though, Beggs is concerned the city still doesn't have enough cold weather shelters available, something he hopes the city can address soon. Now the mayor's office did confirm with me the 2022 proposed budget includes building an additional large shelter outside the downtown core. In the newsroom, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. And our other top story today, the Almira School District pushing forward to rebuild after that devastating fire just destroyed the elementary and middle school building last month. Today, district officials announced plans to break ground on a new school this spring. The board is now in the process of narrowing down the potential builders and architects, and the work is on to narrow the field down from six different possible teams to one. A final decision is expected to be made by the end of this month. Over the winter months, then, they will decide and finalize the building plans and prepare the site. The goal is to rebuild a school that they say can serve the community for the next 75 years. Attorneys for the suspected Freeman High School shooter are trying once again to change the suspect's plea to not guilty by reason of insanity. Caleb Sharp's legal team submitted a motion requesting the change for the first time back in August, but court documents show the judge denied that request, saying the suspect failed to establish a good cause basis. Experts say an insanity plea is difficult to prove, but this week the defense attorneys refiled the motion, reasserting the same request. Caleb Sharp's trial date is currently set for January 18th. An update now on the suspected a suspect rather accused of shooting an ATF agent last Friday. That suspect, Randy Holmes, appeared in court via video conference and he was in a wheelchair still recovering from a gunshot wound to the chest. Now today's hearings addressed violations to his federal supervised release. It was in October that he was accused of a hit and run. Then on November 5th, last Friday, he was accused of being in possession of a weapon and shooting an ATF agent. For the more serious crimes, like the potential charges of selling weapons and shooting the agent, he could face life in prison, federal prison, and that hearing will be next Wednesday. All right, let's talk weather. We had some heavy rain last night, and that rain continued all day today, basically. Sure did. We are joined by meteorologist Michelle Boss. So, Michelle, do we need to expect a complete wet weekend, or do you think there will be some dry spots? No, I think for the uh, for Saturday, we should have a mostly dry day, maybe a little bit of fog in the morning, but we should make it through most of the daytime hours with dry weather. Of course, that's following some uh, pretty hefty rain over the last 24 hours. I just updated some of these rain to totals for the Spokane Airport, nearly three quarters of an inch in the last 24 hours and Coeur d'Alene now up to nine tenths of an inch out in the Silver Valley on uh, the Wallace Kellogg area, nearly nine tenths of an inch as well. And you can see uh, mounts anywhere from four tenths to, uh, you know, more than three quarters of an inch in many other locations as well. But things are starting to dry out in the Spokane area. As you can see, there's still plenty of rain to the south of Spokane and across the Idaho Panhandle, but kind of zooming in. If you have any plans uh, in the evening over the next several hours in Spokane, you should be okay. Maybe a few additional sprinkles, but the steady heavier rains are coming to an end. 48 degrees.
degrees right now in Spokane, 47 in Coeur d'Alene, mid 40s in Moses Lake, 52 degrees in Pullman. The air is pretty mild out there right now, and the weekend uh, could get even milder, especially on Sunday. But in the short term forecast, pretty mild through the evening with temperatures hovering in the middle and upper 40s. We should get a little bit of afternoon sunshine on Saturday for the first uh, couple of hours of the afternoon with a high of 50 degrees. Then clouds return on Sunday, a few showers, windy and mild highs in the upper 50s. All right, my goodness, Michelle, thank you very much. Well, it's been a tradition for Gonzaga's Kennel Club since 2006, Tent City, and after a year off during the pandemic, it is back. So just so you do, if you don't know, Tent City is where students will race to a location on campus so they can get a tent number, and then they camp out overnight to ensure that they will have a seat for Saturday's big basketball game against Texas. Krem 2's Kyle Simchuk is live on campus tonight, and Kyle, as we mentioned earlier, not the best weather to be camping out there. <laughs> Mark, I will say that the rain has let up, but it's still really cold out here. I can't imagine staying out here all night, but of course, Gonzaga fans, they don't care. They're just happy to be back at Tent City. It was canceled last year because of the pandemic, but you can see behind me a lot of people setting up tents. We've heard some good stories. One group told us their tent arrived just two hours ago from Amazon. Another group uh, forgot to bring a tarp, so they're going to be a little wet out here. The grass, uh, it's been raining, you know, throughout the day, so. Uh, good luck to them, I guess. Now I'm with a group over here. We have a freshman, a sophomore, and a junior, and this is all their first time at Tent City. So what do you guys think? Are you excited? So excited. Yeah, Just worried about fun. staying warm, I think, mostly. Yeah. But it's worth it for the Zag. Yeah. You're, the, you're the reasonable one in the group. Yeah. I like you because, yeah, you're like, we got to stay warm. So you have your little uh, baby Yoda pillow. Is that for, for a pillow or just to stay warm? Pillow. Pillow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're only bringing blankets in. Gotcha. We brought a mattress pad, so that Well, be you're bringing a tent though, right? Oh yeah, we have it set up already. Oh, you guys are prepared. Yeah. Okay, and what tent number are you? We're number 16. That's pr So you guys got there fast. So yeah. what happens is every Wednesday or before the game, they send out a tweet and there's 183 tickets. And number one, obviously, you get to be closer uh, to the sideline there. But you guys are 16, so you guys might actually make it on national TV. Excited about that? Sure, we just want our Zags to be on TV. We love them. Absolutely. Okay, well, good luck to you guys. Thank you. I'll let you head on in. You've been very patient. You're waiting with us. Um, a few notes. Saturday's game versus Texas is a marquee early season game. Uh, they play Saturday night. Tip-off is at 7.30 on ESPN. And again, this is a nationally televised game. Mark and Whitney. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. That game yeah. I know people are super excited about. But, Kyle, we have covered these tent cities for many, many years. Like It's a wonderful right. tradition, and they're always excited to be a part of it. And it always seems to fall on some of the crummiest weather weekends. I mean, we've had beautiful weekends, oh. and it just never seems to fall. I know. Yeah. If only basketball season couldn't be in, like, June or something, right. you know, right. when it's, the weather's so nice here. It's always cold. <laughs> My fingers are numb, and we've only been out here. Uh, about an hour and a half so far. The good news is, like for those college kids, like they never get cold, right? That's right. And I kind of feel like the worse yeah. the experience while it's happening, the better the story down the road. That's so true. Maybe that will yeah. come into play. Absolutely. <laughs> story Kyle, for a lifetime. Thank yeah. you very much. It's going to be a great memory for them, regardless. Mm -hmm. All right, we have all heard by now Spokane's housing market is hot, but how long can it actually last until things start to cool down? Buyers are now weighing whether to purchase now or wait until maybe 2022. Waiting only makes you turn around and say, boy, I wish I would have uh, bought that home five years ago. Coming up, Tim Pham takes a closer look at the 2022 forecast for Spokane's housing market and what trends show about buying and selling next year.